Hey, what's up guys? Justin here with the SketchUp Free Essentials. So in today's video, we're going to talk about how you can create different kinds of framing inside of SketchUp Free. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so what we want to do, I'm going to go ahead and delete out my default model, but we're going to start just by modeling out um, the footprint of the space that we want to frame. So in this case, I'm going to model out kind of the corner of a building. So I'm going to draw a line that's maybe like 15 feet long using the line tool. So just tap the L key and then draw like this. And then we're going to type in a value of 15 feet again. And then what we want to do is we want to offset this by the width of our stud. So to do that, we're going to select these two lines right here. I'm going to tap the F key to offset it. And we're going to type in a value of, we'll say five and a half inches right here. And then what I want to do is I want to draw a line on either one of these corners like this. And so what that's going to allow us to do is that's going to allow us to basically create our base stud that's going to be on the bottom of this assembly. And then you can just tap the P key and you can push pull it up by whatever the thickness of that um, piece of wood is going to be. So in this case, I'm assuming it's a two by six. So we're going to make this an inch and a half. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click and I'm going to make it a group right here. That way we don't have to worry about the geometry merging together. Okay, and so for this next step, there's a couple different ways that you could go about it. Because what we want to do, um, I think, is I think we want to lay out our openings before we do any kind of modeling of our studs. And so in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the tape measure tool in create guide mode in order to do that. So to activate that tool, you can just click on it in your tool set over here. If it doesn't show up for whatever reason, just click on the three dots and go find the tape measure tool in here. It doesn't show up um, under the three dots for me because it's already on my toolbar right here. But the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay out my door opening. So to do that, I'm going to click and notice how this creates a guide in here. Now, um, the guides are a little bit funky in the sense that when you create the guides, first of all, you wanna make sure the little plus is showing up. If you don't see the plus, you can activate it by tapping the control key with the tape measure tool active. But what we don't wanna do is click on a corner and then move our mouse over because notice how it only gives us like a guide point and we want a guide line in here. So what we're going to do is we're going to activate that tool and you just want to click somewhere on this line right here, not on the point. So when you do that and then you move your mouse off of it, notice how you can place um, this guide right here. So in this case, I'm going to type in a value of, we'll say it's going to be four feet off of this wall. And then I'm going to click again. I'm going to say it's going to be a three foot rough opening. So I'm just going to draw that across right here. And so now for something like this, because I think it's going to be a door, I just need to come in here and I just need to block this out. So I can double click into that group, draw a line across the face, and draw another line across the face. And you wanna make sure that you're actually drawing the line on the point where the guide intersects with your model. But once you split this out, you can just tap the P key, use the push pull tool to push pull this down and um, align it with the bottom of this object. And then you can erase out this extra right here. So now I've got my door opening roughed out, but I also wanna have a window opening over here. So I'm gonna do the same thing. And I'm just going to draw a guide here, draw a guide here, because I'm assuming it's gonna be a four foot window, and now we're good to go. And so a lot of the time, what you might want to do is you might want to actually model out the door framing for the opening before you do anything else. Um, so in order to do that, what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to model out a stud. Actually, what you might wanna do first, and I probably should have done this before, but it's fine. Um, you probably want to go ahead and create a copy of this stud right here. So this is gonna be your top plate. And so in this case, I might do the same thing, right? I might create a guide. So I'm just gonna use the tape measure tool right here. And I'm assuming I want the very top of this to be 10 feet high. So I'm gonna type in a value of 10 feet right here. And I can just use that as the spot where I make a copy to. And so what I wanna do is I wanna select this, I wanna tap the M key to activate the move tool. And remember with that M key, you can select a base point like this. So I've selected a base point, but I wanna go ahead and tap the control key in order to jump into copy mode. And so when I do that, I can move my mouse up 
and hold the shift key like this to lock it on the blue axis and I can align it with this line. And in this case, we're gonna go ahead and tap the control key um, in order to copy this down. So we're gonna create an extra copy. And before we do that, I'm gonna click into this object. And for this, I'm gonna push pull this back across because this top plate needs to be continuous on this object. And then I can just use the eraser tool in order to clean it up like this. And so now I'm gonna use the move tool in copy mode to create a copy down like this. So now we've got this whole top plate assembly completed. Well, now what I wanna do is I wanna come in here and I wanna model my door and probably my window framing. And so to do that, I'm just going to draw the stud that I want to create over here. So in this case, I'm assuming this is gonna be an inch and a half right here. And I'm just gonna draw a line in here and I'm gonna push pull it up to the height of my window opening. So in this case, I'm gonna type in a value of seven feet right here. That's going to be the stud that's on one side of my door. Well, what I can do is I can right click on it. So I'm gonna click and drag a box across it, right click, and we're gonna click on the option for make component right here. And I'm just gonna call this door stud. There's probably a technical name for it, but I'm just gonna call it door stud right here. But either way, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna make a copy of this across here. So we'll just use the move tool in copy mode right here. Now we've got that kind of created in here. Well, now what we want to do is we want to create our header. And so we're just going to assume that this header is going to be like a two by 12. So I'm just going to come in here and I'm just going to model out the header real quick. We're going to say this is going to be 11.25 inches right here. And I'm just going to draw a line across like this. And we'll push pull it to the thickness, which I believe is an inch and a half on a two by 12. So we'll type in 1.5 and hit the enter key. Then I'm just gonna triple click and I'm gonna make this a group. You could also make it a component. Um, it probably doesn't matter that much for this exercise. And we'll go ahead and leave this like this. Um, I'm not actually sure if you're framing with two by sixes how you handle a header like this. I mean, I'm assuming you wouldn't need multiple, like this many two by 12s in here, but you can kind of frame that out however you like. This is more kind of a, here's how you model this type of situation. But we've got this in here, and then I'm assuming that you're going to have some cripple studs up above, which we can worry about in a second. But um, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the same thing for my window. And so for my window, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start by figuring out where that opening is gonna be. And so in this case, I'm assuming that window is going to be maybe we'll call it three feet above the wall right here. I'm just gonna draw a guide up four feet, or actually I'm going to make this window align with this door over here. So I'm going to tap the up arrow key to lock this to the blue axis. And actually that height is fine. So now what I wanna do is it's probably easiest to start just by modeling the, uh, the larger studs on the outside. So again, I'm just kind of coming in here and I'm just roughing out this shape and I'm push pulling it up right here. We'll go ahead and we'll triple click. We're gonna make this a group. And again, if you felt like you were going to make a bunch of changes to this, you could make it a component instead, but we're just gonna use the move tool in copy mode to copy this across. And I'm actually going to go ahead and erase out some of these guides just because they're getting a little bit confusing in here like this. But now we're gonna do that same thing And so I'm just gonna assume that I'm gonna have a sill plate in here. So I'm just gonna come in here and draw a line. Draw this across and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna push pull this across right here. And we'll go ahead and make this a group. And then at the top, I'm assuming we're gonna use the same kind of framing over here. So you might actually use the move tool in copy mode and just copy this over and then tap the Q key to activate the rectangle tool tap the up arrow key to lock it to the blue axis. We're gonna go ahead and rotate it. And if you made this a component, you would wanna make it unique. In this case, I didn't make it a component. So I can just come in here and I can push pull this across like this um, because the components retain the changes that you've made. So um, if we had copied this over here and changed it and this was a component, these instances would change as well. Um, but now we've got this kind of generally set up. We're gonna add our shorter studs in here in a second. But now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start 
modeling out the rest of my framing. And so this is pretty simple because this is just going to be one simple piece in here. I'm just going to draw a rectangle. This is gonna be a single component that you're just repeating a lot. So I'm gonna select this whole thing. And in this case, um, we're gonna go ahead and make all of these copies of a component. I'm gonna select it, right click and click on make component. And we're gonna call this vertical two by six. It's done right here. And then what we can do is we can use the move tool in copy mode with an array in order to create this um, with multiple copies with set spacing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this, I'm gonna activate the move tool and single click. Then I'm gonna tap the control key and type in whatever I want the spacing of the studs to be. So in this case, I'm gonna type in a value of 16 and hit the enter key. Now, before you type anything else, after you've hit the enter key, you can type in a star or the X key and a number of copies. So in this case, I'm gonna type in times five. If I typed in times six, you can see how I'd have too many studs in here. So um, in this case, we don't necessarily want that. But what we can do is we can move this copy over here like this using the move tool. Now you do wanna tap the control key and create a copy that's on the other side of your opening right here but then we would just do the same thing. So I'm gonna use the move tool in copy mode. 16 times four times three. Actually times three is good because we're gonna take this one and we're going to move it so that it aligns with this corner right here. And then I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna create a copy over here. And then I'm actually going to tap the Q key to activate the rotate tool. And I'm gonna rotate this but I'm gonna tap the control key to go to copy mode so that I can create a copy right here. So now we've got our wall studs framed in here and we can do the same thing over here. So move tool in copy mode, distance. In this case, I'll type in times three and then I'll move this copy back. I'll tap the control key and use the move tool to copy this over here. And then I'll go finish out my framing. So in this case, we'll move this over here, move this over here, and we'll call that good. Now we do still need to come in here and model out our shorter studs on the bottoms and the top. And so in this case, probably what I would do is I would just draw a line across here. I would right click and I would divide it. And what I can do is I can look at these distances in here. So I know these are supposed to be 16 inches on center. And so I can look at this and you can see how my spacing is going to be too much for two segments. So we want three segments right here, but then you can come in here and you can model out those little short pieces. And what I find to be easiest in a situation like this is just to model it off to the side so that you've got the proper size. And then we're just gonna select it and we'll go ahead and make it a group. Um, again, you could make it a component, but in this situation, I don't really think that it gets us that much. So I'm just gonna create a copy over here like this. And then we could do the same thing over here. And if you wanted to, by the way, you could delete out that guideline that we created over here. But I'm just gonna draw a line across this opening. We'll right click and we'll divide it. And you can see how this would be right on 16 inches. And so we'll just do the same thing. For now, we just wanna align it with this edge. But in this case, we can take these studs and we can copy them down using the move tool. And we can just push pull them so that they're the proper height like this. Okay, and then say you wanted to add a joist to this object. 
So what we're gonna do in that situation is we're gonna come over here to the 3D warehouse and we're just gonna search for a wood joist. Um, there's a bunch in here from SketchUp. Now, could you model your own joist? Yes, you could. Um, you could just go find the profile for a wood joist and put it in here. But for what we're doing right here, we're just gonna bring in one of these from SketchUp. So I'm just gonna go with this 210, 12 inch deep TJI joist and again verify the dimensions of your joists obviously but i'm just going to take this and i'm going to use the rotate tool in order to align it with the end of my object now before i start making copies of it what i want to do is i want to come in here and i want to push pull it so i want to set the length of this joist to what we need. And so that's pretty easy to do. You can just come in here and just push pull one of these and then you could just double click in order to recopy those. And so I'm just gonna take this whole thing, double click into it to select it all and I'm gonna assign a default material to it right here. But then we're gonna do the same thing and I'm assuming these are also going to be 16 on, cent on center. That may not be a good assumption. So check whatever your spacing needs to be in your model, but I'm gonna type in times 10 times 11 right here, like this. Now, where this starts to get interesting is if your framing repeats, you can actually come in here and you can copy it in order to quickly create a second floor. Now, before you do that, I'm assuming you're gonna have some kind of plywood across the top of this object. So I'm just gonna draw a rectangle. We'll push pull it by three quarters of an inch right here. Then we'll triple click and we'll group that geometry. And so one thing that I haven't done properly in here and I have no idea why I did this this way is I actually need some additional studs and this is really easy to fix. I can just come in here and I can push pull this down like this. I'm going to erase out this stud right here and I'm just going to extend out my 2x12s so that they're actually sitting on top of a stud. And again, adjusting this stuff is really easy with the way that we've modeled this in SketchUp. I mean, there's a little bit of extra work, but not a lot, but we're just gonna push pull this across right here. We're going to make a copy of this object right here. And then we're also going to add a stud over here and over here in order to support the sill. But now, say we wanted to continue this on the second level, well, we can just drag a right to left crossing box over here, use the move tool in copy mode, and we can copy this up. And in this case, this isn't going to be a door, it's going to be a window, um, but it's actually pretty easy to come in here and erase out this geometry get rid of your stud opening right here. And what you could actually do is just erase out this entire assembly, take this whole thing and make a copy of it. And I'm gonna go ahead and make it a group just for right now so that moving it around is easy, but I'm just going to move it over here. and we'll align it right here with our opening. So then we can just erase out this extra stud and we're pretty much good to go in this situation for our window. So now we've got our framed out model that's got our framing on the bottom and the top. All right, so that should give you a pretty good idea of the process for creating framing in SketchUp Free. Leave a comment below. Let me know if you have any questions about any of these methods. I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.